Good morning. Welcome back to the Sunday Serving Channel where you come every week for words of hope and truth from the gospel. I usually get right down to the business and read from the gospel, talk about it, but I don't know, maybe you're interested in the surroundings here today, a little different, taking my own video here. And we're up on a hill, but it's a little different hill than I'm used to at least. It's University Hill in Syracuse, the Syracuse University. And the reason I'm here today is I uh, came up a couple days ago with my daughter Amy, her husband Steve, and they had a little baby, a little baby boy, named him Clayton Bernard. And that's such a gift, such a miracle. We were worried for Clayton. He needed surgery when he was 24 hours old. We weren't sure he would make it, but he pulled through, he's doing well, so praise God for that. Praise God for Clayton, for little babies, for new life, and and uh, hope to hope Steve and Amy will be able to bring him home soon. And maybe down the road we could do an episode in the garden with Clayton, that means man of clay or lord of clay in, in the garden. But anyways, here we are in this beautiful hilltop in Syracuse. Uh, I'm not sure how often the, there have been videos done up here on this beautiful site, but uh, the building here is uh, in memory of Charles N. Sims, who says educator, preacher, molder of men. So I think the, the history of Syracuse University goes back to the Wesleyan Seminary, so I'm not sure that's being held faithful today, but there it is, wonderful history. I was thinking as far as scriptures, well, of course, with uh, the little Clayton, you know, there's that beautiful story of, uh, of how Jesus a little child in the middle of his disciples and uh, said let all the children come to me and the kingdom of God belongs to them don't hinder them the kingdom of God belongs to them and anybody that wants to come into the kingdom of God has to be like a little child that's such a wonderful passage about children but of course we were talking about the Sermon on the Mount so we should go on with that and uh, I think we got to hang on I'm getting it up here there we go. We had we had gotten to the, uh, the passage about uh, a difficult one. It's about murder. Now, how hard is it to uh, decide not to murder people? It's not that bad. Most of us get through life without having that problem or that on our conscience. But Jesus goes a lot, a lot deeper here about what really is murder. What is the sin of murder? It's much more than picking up a stone or an ax or a gun or a knife and, and killing someone. So here, Matthew 5, verse 21, it says, you have heard that it was said to people long ago, you shall not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, anyone who is angry, anyone who is angry with a brother or a sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, that's a term for contempt, Raka, you fool, is answerable to the court. And anybody who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fires of hell. Now that's, that's some pretty uh, serious consequences for anger. And Jesus is making an important point here that yeah, we can all agree that killing someone is wrong. Murder is wrong, that's one of the Ten Commandments, but the roots of murder are much easier to find root in our hearts, and that is anger or contempt or dislike of someone so strongly that we, uh, we call them a fool or we, we hold a grudge in our heart against someone. That really is the seeds of murder, and Jesus treats that as serious as murder. It says that we are liable for judgment in front of courts or even for the fires of hell if we are so much as angry at a brother or sister. So that's some pretty sharp words. And I think in this day and age where there is so much anger and mistrust over silly things, over who you voted for, over, you know, what your, uh, what your values are. And it doesn't matter, we should love everybody. We should not have anger or resentment towards anybody. And that is what Jesus is pointing out here. Let's go on with this teaching from the Sermon on the Mount about anger and murder. 
Jesus goes on, therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then and come and offer your gift. And that's so important that before we can pray, before we can worship, before we go to church, but you know, even just, we worship God when we pray, when we read the Bible, and it's hypocritical to do that if we hold a grudge against someone. And here Jesus says, if you know a brother or sister holds something against you, before you bring your gift to the altar, that is prayer, before you do that, you should go and settle with them. You should lay down that burden of anger. You should sort out your differences, make peace, and then go and worship God. He goes on here, settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. So there we have it. Settle our anger. Don't hold a grudge. Forgive. So again, forgiveness, such a central theme in Jesus' teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. We have to forgive. We can't hold a grudge. If we do hold a grudge, that is a seed of anger that will lead to murder, just like Cain murdered his brother Abel because he was envious. So that's a tough teaching, and we can't really do that on our own power. I mean, we all get angry. We're all, we're all guilty of holding a grudge or holding some anger. So that means, according to this teaching, we're all guilty of murder. So how do we do that? We can only do that with the power of Jesus, with the power of forgiveness, with letting Jesus into our hearts, who took all the sins of all of us onto his own shoulders and had it nailed on the cross. For our own forgiveness so if we have that attitude every day of laying down our anger of laying down our own power our own pride all our prejudices and we let jesus sort it out we say jesus loved everybody let's have that same love let's have that same willingness to die for our friends for our brothers and sisters even for our enemies that is the teaching that jesus wants us to follow that is a sermon on the mount i think that one of the most important teachings. And here today we are on this campus, this private university, Syracuse, home of the orange. You look back behind me here, the carrier dome's back there somewhere for you sports fans. And my little grandson Clayton's back behind me this way in the uh, Krauss Hospital. He doesn't have to worry about this teaching yet. He's not angry at anybody. He's a sweet little boy. And we are so thankful to God for his protection. But let's take this to heart. Let's love, let's forgive and not be angry. Look forward to seeing you all. God bless. No Remy today. I'm sorry about that. I don't see any dogs around to film. But lots of students on their first day of the university here touring. But anyways, see you later. God bless.